Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Lich Run and welcome to my website at www.reeling-academy.com The place for reeling gurus where you will find heaps of good stuff about reeling, equipment, rig and tools operation, wear control equipment and principles explanation. Now we continue on to part 2 of subsea BOP system, mock system and emergency operating modes. Many of what we touch by here hereafter will be based on part 1 in which we have discussed the operating principles and mechanism of the indirect hydraulic subsea BOP control system. Thus, if you are unfamiliar with the concept of anything in the discussion here, please visit part 1 before continuing. So what is MUX? MUX stands for Multiplex a Communication Method that allows multiple simultaneous signals to be sent over a single communication cable. In the world of subsea BLP, it all comes out to reliability and redundancy. Therefore, test, reliability analysis and redundancy are to ensure the entire reliability of the system and it is all it's about. And the role of the subsea engineer and MUX engineer are crucial in maintaining a reliable MUX system. Please pay close attention to the narration and the mouse pointer hereafter so you can discover how this redundancy philosophy is implemented, how the system operates, and you you discover the major differences between the indirect hydraulic system and the MUX system. Now for a BOP function, there is only electric signal sent from either the ruler's panel or the two pushers panel to the central control unit. The central control unit will then relay this signal down to the subsea electronic modules SEMs in the parts. In the active part and in the inactive part, this is the MUX cable, it goes from the control unit, the central control unit through the wheel reel and it goes down to both parts, active part and inactive part in here. And the subsea electronic modules in the parts in here, they are PLCs. PLCs receive the signal, decode the signal, and trigger the coil of the corresponding solenoid valve. This solenoid valve now is electric energized and hydraulic operated. And this is the first major difference from the indirect hydraulic system in which the solenoid valve is at surface and it is electric energized and air operated. Now the, the solenoid valve moves and transfers the 3000 psi pilot fluid through its port to the corresponding SPM for the desired BOP function. The opposite BOP function SPM pilot line is vented to the accumulator bank. So the, the pilot circuit is a closed loop circuit, but the difference is all happens within the subsea part and the pilot fluid is pri provided from the subsea pilot accumulators store within the parts both in the inactive part and in the active parts in here all right so this is another difference from the indirect hydraulic system where the pilot bottles are stored at surface all right and another similarity with the indirect hydraulic system is that at surface we also have the part selector to choose blue part or yellow part to be the active one. The unselected part umbilical will vent the power fluid to the surface reservoir tank. In this case, this, this, this is the in, uh, inactive part and the one inch hose diameter hose in here will vent the fluid in it back to the surface tank and the cooling unit in here. All right. And the 3,000 or 5,000 power fluid is supplied from surface accumulators. Then this, these are the surface accumulators at the Kumi unit. It is supplied from surface down to the selected part and also from the subsea mounted accumulators. This is, these are the subsea mounted accumulators on the LMRP and on the stack. So the surface stream and the subsea streams are drawn together into one common stream. And this common stream now goes to the regulator where the regulator will regulate it down to the appropriate working pressure for each for a certain BOP function such as 1500 psi for ramps and connectors, 500 to 1500 psi for annular and bull short. However, the blind shear ramp BSI is operated at full system pressure 3000 or 5000 psi depending on system. When the SPM is activated by the pilot fluid, it transfers this power fluid to activate the BOP operating distance. The hydraulic fluid from the other side of the operating distance in the operating cylinders is routed back to the opposite function BSPM valve and vented to the ocean. This has happened within the part in here, in the active part. Alright, and we have regulator in here. The way it works is like this one. As surface control panel, you press increase or decrease button and the signal is then relayed down 
to the PLC, the PLC decodes it, send, this, send the command to the regulator, activate the regulator to regulate the, the, the power fluid. At the output part of the regulator, there are, uh, the, 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 fluid, the, the port is linked to a pressure transducer module, right, subsea pressure transducer module in here, and that module will decode the reading and send the signal up to the control central control unit. The central control unit will display it the reading on the panels in here. That's another different way from the indirect hydraulic system. All right, and here we discover uh, other major component of the MUX system. We have the MUX cables going down from surface to the pass, to the yellow part and the blue part here, yellow part and blue part, blue, yellow in here. And together with this MUX cable in the umbilical, we have the electrical power supply cable to supply 230 volt AC to the parts, to the electronic parts in here, and to the solenoid valves. And in the umbilical, we also have the 1 inch diameter hose to carry the surface supplied power fluid from the accumulators on the surface. So in the normal operation, the electrical and the hydraulic supply, power supply for the MUX are provided from surface. But in emergency situations such as disconnection from the rig, electrical power is supplied from the batteries within the part and the hydraulic power supply is from the subsea accumulator bottles and the commands are sent from the EDS, emergency disconnection system, or the automatic mode, function mode, or deadman system. All right. This is how it all how it's all about the, 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 the major component and the principle of the, uh, the MUX in here. Now we just continue to discover the major components inside a part. A part is a part of the subsea MUX system. And as we said many times, there are two identical parts. They are to be backed up for each other, to be redundant for each other. And within each part, things are designed identical, and the philosophy, the redundancy philosophy, is applied for parts inside the parts within the parts as well. So these parts are mounted on the LMRP, and they contain SPM valves, regulators, subsea electronic modules, subsea transducer module to, to, to transduce the pressure reading from the regulators, solenoid valve, and pilot hydraulic. Uh, accumulator bottles. We have here the pilot accumulator bottles here. We have the electronic parts of the part. We have solenoid valves in here. We will discuss more on the solenoid valves later. Uh, we have the hydraulic section here. And here we have only SPM regulators here. And we have stack stingers and LMRP stingers. What are they? The things are here are the hydraulic fluid control connection means between LMRP and BOP stack. To connect, they are extended into the corresponding receptacles on the top of the BOP stack, and the series of the stingers are then activated to prevent the leak. Now we come back to the solenoid valves. The solenoid valves, right? What are they and how they work? And we said the electronic modules in the pod receives command signal from the surface, decodes it, and sends an electric signal to energize the coil of the corresponding solenoid valve which will move to direct the hydraulic pilot fluid through it. This hydraulic fluid pilot will then activate the related SPM in the part. So it is similar to solenoid valve in the indirect hydraulic system. The difference now is it is located at subsea in the part. It is triggered by electric signal and in the, but while in the indirect hydraulic system, the solenoid valve is a surface and air operated. Now for these solenoid valves, it sounds simple the way it works, but there is actually a lot to talk about it, especially with the tragic but extremely important lesson learned from what happened in Deepwater Horizon Subsea BOP in the Macondo blowout. Alright, now here we will examine how the electronic things are designed and within a part. Uh, we can see in here the redundancy philosophy is applied to these electronic parts as well. So within a part, uh, we have two SEM, two subsea electronic modules. So remember, what we have in the active part, blue part, is repeated exactly the same way in the inactive part, yellow part in here. So now we come back, we say, okay, we have two SEM modules, 
A and B, so they are A and B are to be redundant for each other. So in each SCM module, we have one AMF board for the uh, emergency operating mode. We have one PLC and one solenoid driver board. So so basically, we have two SCM, all right, and we have uh, and now we have two AMF board, two PLCs, two solenoid driver boards. Now we look at the batteries, the nine volt batteries supplies the power to the AMF board. So there are two banks of 9 volt battery. One bank is for one SEM. And we have only one 27 volt battery to supply the power to PLC and the solenoid driver board. All right. So what is the critical thing for these batteries? They have, they have to be within their life cycle to avoid unexpected drain off. Because if this battery is drained off, for sure, this AMF is more here is not supplied, is not powered, so it's, it can't do anything. It's, it does no good. The same for this 27 volt battery. If it's drained up, if it's if, if it's out of its life cycle, it doesn't work. We have no, we have PLC. It doesn't do any good in here, so we can't do anything in emergency mode. All right, and we have the solenoid valve as we explained the way it works before. It sends the pilot fluid through it. Once activated, it sends that pilot fluid through it to the SPM valve. The SPM valve will sends. Will then send the regulated power fluid to the stinger and goes and, and, and that power fluid goes down to the BOP stack. All right. So now this is the picture showing you how an SEM may look. It's a sealed container and it contains within it all the electronic parts, PLC, AMF boards, and battery stuff like that. In the normal operation, the electrical power supply is provided from surface, but in emergency disconnection with surface, the electrical power supply is from these batteries within in here. So these batteries are very, very critical, crucial for the operation of the BOP in the emergency operating mode. So now we come back to discover more about the solenoid valves in the part. All right, each BOP control system solenoid valve has two operating coils. We call it coil A and coil B. One coil is connected to one SEM, either SEM A or SEM B, and they are meant to be redundant for each other. I mean the coils. So energizing one coil is sufficient to activate the solenoid valve. When one coil is energized. The magnetic force pulls the armature of the solenoid uh, into the of the, of the armature e of the of the pull the armature of the solenoid into the space within the coil and open the valve. When the coil is de-energized, a spring will push the armature back outside of the coil and the valve is closed. Normally, the two coils can be successfully fired by either SEMA or SMB or by both. Now let's examine the case we fire these two coils together from two SEM A and B. One coil will create an electromagnetic force with north-south orientation. And the same with the other coil. If both coils are wired the same way, the same manner, right? The same direction. But if one coil is miswired, meaning one coil will create the reverse polarity against the polarity of another coil and the electromagnetic force now will be cancelling together and you will have net zero magnetic force and thus the coil is you know, the coils are opposing each other and the actor and the, the solenoid valve is not activated this is what happened with the deep water horizon but the serene deep PDD scenario, the serendipity scenario in deep water horizon is that one SEM is failed. So thus, because one SEM is failed, it can't fire uh, the coil which is connected to it. So therefore, the misfire wire coil still activates because once it's fired from another SEM, it is activated and it allows the pilot fluid go through it and go to the SPM and the BSR was activated. But the thing with the deep water horizon is that when the BSR is activated, the, the pipe is off center and it prevents a, an ineffective shear and seal from the BSR.
So it's very critical to ensure that these two coils, these two coils are wired correctly and produce the same polarity to avoid the Siren PD DPT as what happened in the Deepwater Horizon. And now we examine the emergency operating modes. There are two, three emergency operating modes. Number one is the emergency disconnection system. Number two is auto shear system. And number three is automatic mode function or AMF deadman system. So first, emergency disconnection system requires human initiation. It is designed to activate BSR, blind shear ramp, closed choke and queue line valves, and latch MRP. It is mostly used when the DP system fails and the rig drifts off location. In that case, we will leave the BAB stack on the wellhead. The rig crew will initiate the immediate emergency system uh, disconnection system. In the auto shear system, the function will be armed from either the ruler control panel or the tool booster panel. And this is happen when the LMRP is accidentally separated from the BLP. In that case, a trigger valve between the LMRP and the stack plate will activate a pilot, pilot pressure 3000 PSI. This pilot pressure energizes the power of hydraulic fluid to activate the BSR and close the ramp lock. And the pilot and the power fluid now is provided from the stack mounted accumulators. And now we come to the automatic mode function AMF Deadman system. And it, this system doesn't require a human intervention as, as well. And it is triggered upon three conditions. Number one, you have loss of electrical power and communication from the MUX and vehicle. Number two, you have loss of communi communication from the part SEMs modules. And number three, we have the loss of hydraulic pressure from surface to the subsea BOP. This is detected by comparison between the hydraulic pressure of a system against the subsea hydraulic static pressure. And the power hydraulic now is provided from the subsea bottles and it is made available to both parts, blue part and yellow part, and both parts act in parallel to complete the command. And this is all about the major component and the operating principles of the MUX system. Thank you, and hopefully that you guys did get some uh, useful information from the presentation. If you have any questions or comments, please direct them to my personal personal email address at lich.tran01.com.sg uh, lich .tran01 And not to forget to check out the website www.ruling-academy.com where there are many other technical articles about upstream drilling in oil and gas and standards API and standards and uh, no sock stuff like that for your reference enjoy and cheers see you soon in next part